STJ kind of has answers. And the shock therapy oh my god! Place. And we're off with an a bomb. for sure. B-Bats is thrilled the with bump. that one. 34%. Now we all know what that does. Uh, <laughs> really a weird way to start this off. And uh, just like that, though, STJ answering back. Great DI uh, from B-Bats to get out of that combo. And now the War of Attrition starts. So it begins. A bomb to explosively kick things off. And now we slow it oh, down a little that bit. Just barely is yep. that's going to do it. See what I'm saying? Man? You're, you know, he's in his face. This is a little weird for Puff players. They're like, I thought I'm supposed to be kind of dictating the pace. I thought I'm supposed to be spacing around things. Yeah. Uh, it's fun to see. That position on that first stock in particular is just shocking for me to watch, right? Because, again, looking at every other Peach in existence, you would never, ever see a Peach go that far out and re-drift on a Jigglypuff to find a kill off the top that early. Yeah, absolutely. One of the other things we haven't mentioned kind of... Uh, in a set where it's generally kind of slower, uh, you know, we've already seen a bomb, but typically this is where we see kind of the more interesting item pulls, yeah. uh, turnips like Stitch, uh, bombs, that kind of stuff, because Peach just gets more chances to pull a turnip. And one of the stylistic wow, differences so we're seeing good. from B-Bats there, every other Peach, like every other Peach, grabs a turnip there and tries to go for an edge card. B-Bats running off the stage, hitting the forward air, just a completely different play style for uh, Peach. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Taffo who had talked about kind of the oh! resource management of uh, almost like a meter, right, where Peach gets to yes. pull and gain meter, uh, just fish out for that stitch while Puff gets just a lot of great advantage. Meanwhile, B-Bats is just absolutely running away with this one. B -Bats Unfortunately, answering the question of, like, what do you do when a, uh, when a Peach gets in your face, SDJ maybe doesn't have the answer yet. Right. Needs some time to figure it out. Do you want to say rest in peace to Taffo? Unfortunately, passed away due to uh, engagement baiting too hard. Oh we God. love you so much, Tafikans. You are a great guy. You'll be remembered. <laughs> With that said, uh, STJ slowing it down a little bit. Uh, I'm actually kind of interested to see that they started on this stage. Wow, uh, that's <laughs> too. Knowing the cloud placement there too is really good on the side of Bevas. <gasps> no, oh, fan of him. <laughs> Okay, like, really, really good awareness there. Again, like, kind of, how often do you see a Peach sort of bait the float there? It's like, I'm not going to grab grab ledge. We said already that Peach not good off of the ledge. It's kind of like this really weird bait that you just don't know how to play into it if you've never seen it before. Radar, how did B-Bats just three-stock STJ? I have so many questions. I'm confused about why they went to Yoshi's first. I guess they both want to scrap and just fight to the absolute death. But how did B-Bats just get a three-stock there? I mean, showing why B-Bats beat Kadoran, showing just how capable uh, B-Bats is, one of my favorite peaches to watch right now. And, um, you know, like, again, I'm sure people in the Twitch chat were like, oh, God, Puff Peach, that we're going to be here for, uh, you know, an hour. Maybe not, you know? Like, we're watching a really fast-paced game, you know, uh, B-Bats being so, so, so aggressive. And SUJ needs to find the answers in this set. And the space he's going to get from Dreamland might do it. For sure. You know what is so funny? There is a very deep cut here where you and I were commentating Xanadu on lines, like, yes. three years ago. Every and the, me the meme was that B-Bats could never crack top eights at them. Look at that, though. Oh, Peach he's alive. does get to live. B-Bats, though, making a great run at this tournament. We'll see if he can keep this one going right there. The space to SDJ's detriment right there with that rest. Yeah, in a way, we're seeing really kind of two, a, a rivalry between two kind of players who are both kind of making a bigger name for themselves, moving into that kind of next level of play. Again, we talked about SDJ getting that top eight at Shine, obviously a very, very impressive showing. So this is the chance to kind of cement that, to kind of push further. We, we've seen B-Bats do well at the local tournaments. We've seen B-Bats take some names. But you got to take names on the road, and it might happen today. 100%. I mean, it already has happened. We got Kadoran, right? So. All right, B-Bats needs to kind of find his way back into this game. This is more traditional of what we would see from Puff Peach, right? The War of Attrition. SDJ finding his hit slowly but surely. Eventually, he'll get the kill. What can Peach do in this situation? It's high percent. Everything's going to push him off. And this is one of those things, like, I really never get tired of it, of what makes Melee so beautiful is that we watched a very, very different game one than mm -hmm. what we're seeing right now. Um, and it's really kind of because SCJ was like, you know what? I gotta just switch a couple things up. I'm, I'm gonna done like, playing, man. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done playing. with this. Uh, you know, like, interacting. That's bad. I'm yeah. not doing that anymore. Uh, yeah. Kind of cringe. I don't want to interact yeah, anymore. Ew, so. ew, yucky. And so we got to see B-Bats answer that. Yep. How do you deal with a puff that kind of wants to kind of run away, wants to not play certain positions? Um, 
able to sort of play in that spacing. Yep. You know, sometimes it's stage positioning stuff, but maybe, like you said, that kind of war of attrition, that meter of the turnip could be an option. That's something B-Bats could incorporate. Not yeah. doing it quite yet, though. This stage specifically really does highlight the uh, oh! deficiencies that B-Bats has in this matchup. But again, that positioning is just unreal on the side of B-Bats, just so aggressively going out there to find the up air kill off the top pretty early as well. Yeah, again, and, and this is, I think, a big stylistic difference here where, you know, B-Bats willing to kind of go out into the spaces that other Peaches are not. And we actually see, like, STJ kind of reacting like, what? Oh, oh, okay, I guess I'm just dead there. So really, really exciting to see. Uh, Nair, good tool to get down uh, against Peach. Maybe not as much kind of ability to sort of contest that, yep. but it's pretty back and forth. I mean, 37%, that's not an insurmountable kind of place if you're at 98 especially given it's Oh my line. gosh, Dot okay, Eyes to Bomb Bomb okay. back to back. This is where it gets risky though. If that hitbox is close to you, Peach is dead. You know, so... Gonna be just Z-drop or throw down maybe? No, holds on to it. Yeah, playing the slow game right there. Both players don't want any of that mess. All right. Okay, we don't see a Tomahawk there like we saw earlier. Um, one of the things we haven't talked about as well is uh, one of the ways Puff is really going to able to secure kills is that drill up smash. We saw SCJ go for it there. That is kind of a big part of the win condition. Uh, one of the edges that Puff has. But oh that my is a god, what? Oh, they are drops smiling it though, down. Isn't able to get it. You can see kind of went for the Nair, hoping to get A to re-grab. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Rolling through that down smash is so, so incredible from STJ. Again, the two-frame window on forward roll from Puff being one of those fastest rolls in the game for uh, anyone in the cast of Melee. Gets through a lot. No! Oh what? my god! Come on, man! The meter don't even matter. Sometimes you got to spend it, but what are you spending it on, man? Yeah, you know, again... It it is interesting because there's always pros and cons to every playstyle. Uh, we've been seeing the kind of hold forward playstyle of B-Bats, and it's working out in some spots. And in others, maybe a bit of patience is, is necessary. Maybe slowing it down and going, hey, I have a stitch. I can kind of play a different win condition for a little bit. Um, there's always a balance, and, and a good player is kind of weighing those options throughout the set and kind of dialing it in as it goes on. Yeah, this, this match in particular, this sat game in particular, excuse me, really just showcasing the game creating the game plan, right? It is this stage, how does B-Bats actually approach Ooh. aggressively when he can't catch SDJ, period? If SDJ goes on top platform, forget about it. Yes, absolutely. You know, we're seeing the counter pick really work out for SDJ, but if SDJ takes this game, you know, B-Bats doesn't have to play with arguably the worst stage for right. Peach right now, especially for B-Bats' play style. Upwards thrown turnips again. I mentioned that in the last B-Bat set versus Trip, you know, kind of dividing that stage into two workable areas where the Peach can just choose to cover one. Oh, and there's that there again! That's so good! I have not seen any other Peach do that. This is the thing, again, you know, this is a space where, okay, Peach, bad on ledge, right? But not if you're B-Bat's able to kind of bait this weird interaction, and SCJ doesn't have an answer for it quite yet. All right, playing behind, though. Two minutes 30 left on the clock. Yeah. Suffice it to say, we could be in timeout territory here if SDJ continues to go around in the circle loop-de-loop. -loop. Getting 1% from Dare. <laughs> here comes the scrap. That's kind of what B-Bats wants, even though he's it a really stop is. down. Yeah, especially, again, with those kind of meaty hitboxes, you know, using something like a down smash, you can get a quick, clean percent lead, and then do a Nair, do a fair, and suddenly it's not looking so bad. Uh, but, like the forward air into grab, another forward air. Really, just in general, SDJ's forward oh, no, air jump. is very, very strong for this side, especially the weak ones. Taking that game, now we got to talk counter picks. Yeah. I feel like that is going to be a huge part of this matchup. One of the ones that comes to mind is Pokemon Stadium. Yep. Um, you think SDJ is going to play Jigglypuff? <laughs> FD, another one that I like. I know yeah. Lod picks that one a lot. Ooh, just counter. really simplifies things down. Kills off the side. Fountain of Dreams, I do like. B-Bats, though, finding a ton of kills off of these really aggressive up airs like that, especially if he goes that far up and over. We can see a kill on SDJ probably as early as, like, 80 or 90. Especially since we've seen in this set uh, B-Bats willing to kind of go out and, and work off of the side, you know, like, kind of uh, edge guarding Puff in a way that you don't normally see. One thing I do want to mention there is I said at the beginning that there are ways to build up meaningful damage as Peach, and we just saw it. Like, B-Bats got, like, 60% off that opening, and now suddenly, you know, the uh, Puff is, you know, ready to die. Like, yep. 105, solid hit could do it. 
And again, quick uh, hyper floats, we will say. Check that off your bingo cards, Twitch chat. <laughs> but yeah, that is kind of the Ooh. aggressive option of choice that these Peaches like to go for in this matchup. That was a huge adaptation for modern day Peach to be able to have a quick burst option to kill with Nair or up air off the top. Yeah, no, really, really great point there. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of successful Tomahawks from Evats. One of the main ways STJ has been able to get these openings. But ooh, just like that, Peach getting back center stage. And if we can kind of see Bebats adapt to that opening kind of from the, the Tomahawk, it's looking pretty good for Bebats, right. I feel. Traded hits again, benefiting Bebats until SGJ can let one of those rests rip. Doesn't want to do it right now, wants to take this first stock honestly, especially with Bebats at this high percent. And I love that you bring up rest because kind of some of the ways we've seen Puff really leverage this matchup and kind of get oh that edge God. hasn't really happened. Uh, I was just going to bring up, like, we haven't really seen a lot of the drill up smash. That's one of the way, main ways to secure kills. We haven't seen kind of more aggressive rest because yep. the punish isn't there as much. Uh, so it's tricky, you know, like you can't just force it, but that is one of the things you need to kind of really be pushing. Um, and so far, SCJ hasn't been able to kind of make it work. Bebats pushing into the corner. That platform kind of playing the assist game for him. Not going to get the kill just yeah, yet. That, that fair it. will do it, though. Crazy lead for Bebats. Oh my gosh, Z drop into a forward air was so sick for a quick 25. Make it almost 40. I love talking about defensive play and melee too. The ability to, to the decision to go for the light shield there, um, especially in the face of so many tomahawk grabs like we just saw there. Really, really smart from Bebats, you know. And up tilt rest would have been terrible at that percent, but doesn't end up happening. Yep. Platform tech This chase. is oh so my scary gosh. for okay. SGJ. Gets out by the skin of his teeth. SGJ just licking those lips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's been happening. He's, he's a been lot. hanging out there, <laughs> like, <laughs> like like more than you would expect, you know. Yeah. <laughs> With that, though, um, B-Bat's kind of really pushing SGJ back and forth into the corner. Almost able to kind of call out a shield drop, but doesn't get it. Now on the ledge. I yeah, can't look away now, Raider. Why did you it's, do that it's to too me? Much. It's like it's he's, he's like so, controlling his aerial so drift lubricated. with it. <laughs> what is happening? Someone get this man some chapstick. <laughs> SDJ will find the stock right there. Medium percent, though, and again, I mentioned it. Probably like 80, 90 percent, depending on positioning. That up air will kill. That one, again, so close to the ground, not going to do it. Yeah, just barely not, but edging it out on the side. You know, we've seen so many kills off the side on this game. Makes sense why we're counterpacking here. That will do it. And this is, again, a player matchup specifically that maybe benefits Bebat so much because SDJ, a puff that's just willing to drift into you a lot, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now, one of the main things you got to be thinking as B-Bats is I don't want to get rested. Yep. Uh, this is how suddenly a set where you have a sizable, sizable lead, especially as a floaty, can suddenly go not your way. But now at 53, suddenly it's not looking so good. You know, even a rest, Peach not the greatest with the punishes, but a yep. little bit more percent, and suddenly a rest is unsafe. Not to mention, there is no good rest setup at 78. Okay, late, late hit in there into that immediate down smash. Attacks on a bit more damage. B-Bats coming in with the hyper float yeah. up air. Finds one off of a jump instead. And B-Bats goes up two games to one. B-Bats looking a little bit like Fox with these up air kills, man. Uh, really, really sharking it. For someone who started the match with, I'm playing a puff. Swear word. <laughs> uh, looking more comfortable than you'd expect. B-Bats does have a lot of, you know, I brought up the Xanadu online sets and a lot of the online tournaments that you and I had able, were able to do and watch B-Bats come up through those events. He has played a lot of Dawson in particular mm -hmm. as a pop player, so I'm sure he has many more choice words than what we just heard before the set started about Puff as a character. But he is showing a lot of cool experience and just kind of weird aggression in this matchup. Yeah, and again, like, there's something so interesting about not playing the by the book play style. You know, I think we've, if you've played this game for a long time, you'll start to get used to like things that players typically do. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why Bebats is successful right now is many, many things he's doing are not typical. Right. Many of the things that SDJ is having to deal with are kind of weird, you know? Like, it, it's just making him uncomfortable. Uh, and yeah, it's really, really, really working out. About even in percent so far, though, we aren't seeing those crazy traded hits where Bebats gets to run away with a huge percent lead early on. That being said, we are approaching kill percent, though, for that burst option of choice, which is if SDJ drifts in lazily with an aerial, you can just get a hyper float up air right out. That'll be a kill. 
Yeah, but speaking of kills, 125, get a couple more back airs and you're good if you're SCJ. But, you know, 93, not too bad either. And again, we've been seeing these kind of more aggressive edge guards from B-Bats, so it's entirely possible mm -hmm. he kind of contests this position from Puff. Okay, falling Nair yet into another one. I was going to say Nair or up air, both potential kill options right here that SDJ has to look out for. Tomahawk into their turnaround grab, not going to do it, but one more will find it for a little more percent. How does SDJ get this kill, though? You know, one of the things I wonder is we've been seeing a lot of successful Tomahawks from STJ, but they've almost entirely been grabs. And I think B-Bats is actually okay with kind of accepting the grab. You know, if you get like a grab at 120, who cares? But if we see like maybe a little bit more of like Tomahawk up tilt, that kind of thing, yep. uh, it might be a little bit more difficult to deal with. That said, uh, B-Bats just so unpredictable. For the amount of time we saw STJ in the last set we had of him do aerial into immediate up tilt, we have not seen a lot of that in this game, oh. and that's a good setup to find rest, too. Again, we're at a zero for the amount of rest attempted in this set so far. I think we had one, and it didn't even kill off the top. Right. Oh, that is. You're yeah. right. You're right. So, right at the beginning of that game. I mean, for, for a set this long, it, it, it's still incredibly surprising, right? Like, rolling out of the corner, kind of one of the classic options. Peach with a pretty bad roll. Ooh, really interesting Ooh. tech and really interesting extension. I don't even think you want tech roll there, right? Because you, you just do. eat a little bit more damage. B-Bat's starting to run away with a little bit more of a lead. Yeah, it's always one of the great examples of illustrating how important stage positioning is. When you get that roll and a tech roll in the corner, it's basically the same as a tech in place. So. Right. All right. 60% lead, make that almost 90 now after the magnifying glass. And again, that positioning so strong for B-Bat's throughout this set. Just getting so many up air kills. Again, don't want to get rested. Willing to take the grab. I feel like, you know, we're not seeing uh, the up tilt. We're not even seeing a pretty kind of cheeky option in Nair rest, which is not something I'd see from STJ, given the fact that STJ doesn't rest as much. But, you know, sometimes you got to just whip it out. Again, we haven't even seen a single rest punish from right. Rebat, so maybe now is the time. Should be able to spend float right here. I believe STJ caught jump earlier. Yeah, there goes the umbrella. Oh, what? Wow, nice light Love shield. Love the light shield, yeah. You know, you can really see the familiarity. You, know, you mentioned Dawson uh, as a matchup experience for B-Bats. We're seeing that happen. Like, the decision to light shield there really shows matchup awareness. Still not going to do it. Amazing DI. Yeah, and again, okay, we did down. see up air attempt right there. That is where Hungrybox makes his money in terms of getting this matchup off the ground. Wow. The amount oh, of down smash practice. in a matchup where both of these players seem to be doing air to air so much is just shocking to me. Absolutely. Okay, another amazing light shield. Still living for now, and again, as long as B-Bats doesn't fall to final stock, I'm not getting too nervous yet. Yeah, especially like once you get into that kind of like 80-ish percent, it starts to be pretty juicy for, for Peach. You know, you're kind of always knocking Puff off stage, and with the fact that B-Bats has been so good at sharking with those up airs, it's stressful for SCJ. Gonna yep. get another solid hit, goes for the forward air, kind of risking it all, and yep. that should do it for that stock. SCJ back against the wall, wants to take it home for Texas. Is it going to happen? There is something that SCJ can do. <gasps> oh, no. I don't know. That was a missed input right it there. Was for Make sure. it two. No way does SCJ want the jab there. Uh, that would have been. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. We might just end in a bang right now. Watch that drift. Oh, Watch oh, the shield. The shield too. is so small. Oh, Kill up the smash. What? B-Bats taking punish. that one home, getting the heart rate going up a little bit right there.